Hey everyone, this is Dan with my first video on weekly chart analysis for my top holdings. I own about 20 stocks in my portfolio and I review my stocks every weekend to decide what I need to do in the following week. The first two charts that I review are usually SPY and QQQ, which reflect the movements of S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. For this week, I will also look at BioNTech, Moderna, Alphabet, ASML, Regeneron, and Royal Caribbean. Let's get to the charts. Before I get started, I'd like to caution you that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my stock trading strategies and analyses for educational purpose only. If you want to buy or sell stocks, you should make your own decisions and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. Let's start with SPY. The panel on the left is the daily chart for the last year. The panel on the right is the hourly chart for the last 20 days. Let's zoom in a little bit closer for the daily chart. As you can see, ever since the beginning of October, SPY has been going up and up. At this point, the 50-day average, which is the blue dashed line, is above the 100-day moving average, which is the yellow dashed line, and is above the 200-day moving average, which is the red dashed line. And also the 20-day moving average, which is the middle of the Bollinger Band, is above the 50-day, 100-day, and 200-day moving averages. Definitely, the picture is very bullish for SPY. Actually, a while back, I bought UPRO, which is the triple index CDF index to the SPY movement. At this point, I'm seeing quite a bit of profit for now. And looking at the chart, there's no reason for me to sell yet. Actually, I sold some around here, but only a small percentage of my UPRO holding. At this point, I'm still holding quite a number of shares. I'm happy with it. I'm just going to continue to hold on to it until maybe in the next few days, if the price does dip below the 20-day moving average, that'll be the first sign that it might be turning bearish for the short term. At that point, I might be selling some shares of my UPRO. As for the hourly chart, definitely also very bullish. And if you look at RSI, there's an overbought situation here on November 5th. That's why it went down for a few days. But then the overall bullishness of the market boosted up the price again. RSI at this point is still at about 70 level, which is pretty high. And DMI, not surprisingly, is still bullish. MACD actually started to turn a little bit bearish now, almost neutral after being bullish for a while. Definitely, I'm going to hold on to my UPRO ETF. Even though SPY has been doing very well in the last few weeks, I'm not going to be complacent about it because I believe understanding of technical analysis in combination of being aware of the macroeconomic events is the best way to keep ahead of the market and end up winning. There are several things that can possibly bring down SPY and the broad market in the next few weeks. For example, if we continued, if we continue to see high inflation rates, that'll depress the market, especially with high tech stocks such as ASML and Google or Alphabet. The Fed QE tapering will certainly have some effects on the market. The good news is that the tapering will be very gentle. Instead of buying assets at $120 billion a month, the Fed will be buying assets at $105 billion a month, a $15 billion reduction which is really very gentle. Then the Biden $1.2 trillion infrastructure package, which was approved recently by the Congress, will certainly increase government borrowing, which will possibly in turn increase interest rates, especially when the Fed QE tapering is happening at the same time. And if the interest rates go up, most likely a lot of the stocks will go down. There's a possibility that the Chinese real estate market problem as related to Evergrande and a few major real estate companies in China will get worse and the problem in China might ripple into the rest of the world markets. I'll be watching these events very closely 
and who knows what other things might develop. When I see something happening that will affect the broad market or any one of the stocks in my portfolio, I will be sharing that information with my subscribers in Twitter and I will definitely be publishing new videos about the most recent developments. If you like what you've seen so far, I'd like to encourage you to click the like, subscribe and notification button so that you'll be notified when I publish my next video. It'll also encourage me to publish more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Let's look at QQQ, representing the movement of NASDAQ 100. Again, similar to SPY, it's very bullish. The 20-day moving average is above the 50-day moving average, which is above the 100-day moving average, the yellow dash line, and which is above the 200-day moving average, which is the red dash line. I bought some TQQQ a few weeks ago. Definitely, I'm still holding on to it. And there's no reason for me to sell until the price starts to dip below the 20-day moving average. Then I might sell some shares of my TQQQ. For now, I'm just going to let it continue to rise and enjoy the profit. Hourly chart, also very bullish. Let's look at BioNTech. BioNTech has a bit of a bumpy ride after it peaked on August 5th. And since then, because of the introduction of some of the COVID pills, right around here in the end of September, it was announced that Eli Lilly came up with a COVID pill. And then around November 5th, Pfizer also came up with a COVID pill. And partly because of those, my Antac has been coming down. Although recently, there's been a recovery. And based on my fundamental analysis, which I published a few days ago, I believe the sell-off, it's really overdone. It's really an overreaction to the COVID pills because I don't believe the COVID pills re replace the vaccines. All the rich developed nations will continue to rely on the vaccines and their booster shots to protect the citizens. The COVID pills will be the second line of defense. And sure enough, starting about five, six days ago, BioNTech has been recovering, and especially as of last Friday, a couple of days ago, FDA approved the BioNTech booster shot and Moderna booster shot for people who are 18 years of age and older. Because of that, I believe the price for BioNTech as well as for Moderna will continue to go up in the next few days. I have been swing trading BioNTech shares. The last time I bought BioNTech shares was on November 4th, right around here, and then again on November 8th when it bottomed out. And that's why I'm seeing a little bit of gain at this point. I will continue to hold on to my BioNTech shares for the next couple of weeks at least. This is one stock that technical analysis and staying in tune with the news development are very, very important for swing trading. And I'm also holding BioNTech shares for the long term because I think this company as well as Moderna have great futures because of the mRNA technologies that they have mastered. Hourly chart, at least for the last six, seven days, being bullish, is continuing to march up this upward channel. Let's look at Moderna. The shape of the Moderna chart is very similar to BioNTech's chart, except it's a little bit more bearish up until about November 11, when it bottomed out at about $220 a share. And Moderna got a big boost just a couple of days ago on Friday when FDA approved the Moderna booster shot as well as the BioNTech booster shot for people who are 18 years of age or older. It alleviated some of the concerns about heart inflammation for younger males after they have received the Moderna vaccine. Unfortunately, a few countries, including Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and France, have recently advised against the use of Moderna vaccine on younger males. And hopefully the FDA approval will turn around that trend. And because of it, I also bought some additional Moderna shares recently. The last time I bought Moderna shares was on November 19th. The last time I bought Moderna shares was just past Friday, a couple of days ago. And I tweeted that to my Twitter subscribers. If you look at the hourly chart, it's been bullish in the last five, six days. However, if Moderna fails to get above this red dash line, which is a 200-day moving average, that'll be a bearish sign. And in fact, if it starts to come down from there, I will probably sell some of the shares. It is a very important resistance level that the stock price will have overcome at this point. 
the 200 day moving average. And after that, it'll have to overcome the 20 day moving average in the middle of the Bollinger Band to demonstrate the bullishness of the stock. I will be monitoring very closely the movements of the chart as well as any news developments related to Moderna. Let's look at Google. The last time I bought Google was on September 22nd and I told my Twitter subscribers about that also. But it was right around here and since then the price dropped for a few days and then it started to pick up. So at this point I am already seeing profit. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. If you look at the chart for the last about two, three weeks, it's been very bullish. The price is above the 20 day moving average, above the 50 day moving average, the 100 day moving average, as well as the 200 day moving average. Definitely a classical bullish chart. Hourly chart is trending up this nice upward sloping channel here. Definitely it's bullish all around. At this point, I'm definitely holding to my Google shares until maybe when a price gets below the middle of the Bollinger Band then I might sell some of the shares for swing trading but I'll be holding a lot of Google shares for the long term or Alphabet shares for the long term based on the fundamental analysis I published about a couple weeks ago I'm very bullish on the company because I think it's a money making engine let's look at my favorite semiconductor stock ASML I've been swing trading ASML shares and have made quite a bit of profit. And the last time I bought ASML shares was on October 5th. And I tweeted my subscribers about that. And that was a very lucky decision. And since then, it's been going up and up. If you look at the chart, it's very bullish. The stock price is above the 50-day moving average as well as the 20-day moving average, 100-day moving average, also above the 200-day moving average. I'll definitely hold on to my shares when the price dips below the 20 day moving average and if it doesn't recover above that and when the 20 day moving average becomes a resistance like around here I might sell some of the shares just for swing trading for long term I'm definitely holding a lot of shares I'm very bullish on the company based on my fundamental analysis published a couple weeks ago hourly chart also very bullish Let's look at Regeneron. The picture for the Regeneron is not as rosy as some of the other stocks that we looked at a moment ago. I did a fundamental analysis on Regeneron about three weeks ago and decided that it's a very strong company because they have a strong product development pipeline. Also recently they came up with the COVID treatment which sells for about $1,200 a treatment and the US government has bought many doses of the treatment. It was also approved by the EU and UK. And because of that development, I decided to buy Regeneron. The day I bought Regeneron was September 15th, right around here. And since then actually went down quite a bit and then it finally started to recover and then went down a little bit again as of the beginning of November. In the last few days, finally recovered up to the point where I bought it. I'm still holding on to my shares because long term, I'm very bullish on Regeneron. And I'll be watching this very carefully. At this point, looks like it's making a higher low after the stock bottom mile on October 8th. And this peak here is very important. Hopefully, it'll overcome this peak and we see a higher high. And if that does happen, that's definitely a bullish sign. And the next resistance will be this peak at 686. However, if it doesn't get above this point and start drifting down, I'll be very careful especially if it drops below this point that will be a bearish sign at that point i might sell some of my regeneron shares and try to buy them back at a lower price for swing trading but long term i'm definitely bullish on regeneron if you look at the hourly chart it has been pretty bullish in the last two three weeks let's look at royal caribbean rcl Looks like it's been going sideways since February. This is my favorite recovery stock. I've been swing trading this and have made quite a bit of profit. The last time I bought RCL was on November 12th, right around here. At that point, I was thinking that because I saw a trend line here, a support line. Let me draw that. Because I saw the stock making higher lows consistently, one time, two times, three times. And when the price got to this point, that's when I bought more shares. 
However, I guess wrong. It did shoot up for a while and then it started to drop. The main reason why is because the new COVID cases are starting to increase again in some parts of the United States and Europe. That's not a good sign for Royal Caribbean. That's why I sold some of the shares I bought at this point a couple days ago to cut my losses. I'm still bullish on Royal Caribbean for the long term because I've done my fundamental analysis. The last video I did on Royal Caribbean was published a couple of months ago. Among all the cruise line companies, Royal Caribbean has the strongest balance sheet. That means they're the least likely to go bankrupt. And as we know, if any one of the big cruise company goes bankrupt, the rest of the companies will just take up their market shares. Royal Caribbean is going to be the one that's going to be standing no matter what happens because the other cruise companies will drop first. And that's why I decided to pick that one as a recovery stock. Hopefully, as the developed countries start to roll out more booster shots, then the new cases will go down. And then the recovery stocks such as Royal Caribbean and some of the airline stocks will pick up again. As you can see, the price dropped below the 200-day moving average on November 15. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to sell some of my shares. Hourly chart also looks very bearish in the last two, three weeks. At this point, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my Twitter account. It's Dan Market L. I will be tweeting my subscribers about some of my trades as well as any significant news developments about the stocks in my portfolio. And I'd like to remind you to click the like, subscribe, and notification button if you like what you've seen so far. This will encourage me to publish more videos like this in the future. It will also enable you to be notified when I publish my next video. Thank you very much. This about wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments.